Let's program and be creative. It's time for MIT App Inventor. In this video, we're gonna finish up our COVID-19 awareness and prevention app. Um, in the previous video, we actually did most of the coding for this. In this video, we're going to fo focus on doing our score and saving our sc high scores and trying to beat that high score. This app covers the AP Computer Science Principles, Big Idea 3.8, Iteration 3.9, Developing Algorithms, and 3.10 List. If you go to the previous video, I show you exactly, I go over those big ideas and cover how we will be using that in this app. Some of those things we've already covered in this app, we're pretty much wrapping up the app and adding in our high score, functionality, and fixing a couple little things. So let's actually look at our app. Right now it is working. I'm gonna refresh the screen so we can start over. And if you click on play, social distance. you have to follow the sequence. So I can see social distance. Social distance, wash hands. Social distance, wash hands. So I'd click hand sanitizer. It didn't tell me game over. I need to add that in. So right now it wants me to. Social distance, wash hands, disinfect. So social distance, wash hands, disinfect. Social distance, wash hands, disinfect, hand sanitizer. Social distance, wash hands, disinfect, hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer. Social distance, wash hands, disinfect, hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer. So you can see it's, I can cheat. As it's saying it, I'm able to click on these things. We should not have that. You should have the user wait until after they're done talking for them to be able to click on stuff. So let's do that first. Let's fix that little kink in our system. So we're gonna need two things. We need to lock it while they're before they're talking. So I'm gonna go to text to speech and they have this before speaking and they have this after speaking. So before speaking and after speaking. Well, what do I wanna do? I wanna lock these images. I don't want anyone to be able to click on them until after I'm done talking or after it says the sequence. Well, these images has this little box called clickable. And if we turn it off, then it's not clickable. So right now I turn it off wash hand. See, I cannot click it. I can click these, but I can't click that one. So I'm gonna come back here and that's what we wanna do. So let's build a simple procedure Let's call it locking. And let's call it, the input is gonna be game speaking. Remember for your create performance task, you're gonna need a procedure that has input that can change. So inside of here, what do we wanna do? So uh, lock game. Before speaking, I'm gonna just simply call, I'm gonna simply call lock game. And is it the game speaking? Before I'm speaking, yes, it's about to. So I'm gonna pass in true. And down here, I'm going to procedures, lock game. And the results, after I'm speaking, is the game speaking? No, I'm going to go back to logic. I'm going to pass in false. So inside of here, I'm going to turn the clickables off for these images based on if the game is speaking or not. So all I'm simply going to do is come down, come here to image wash hands. See right here, it says clickable. I'm going to pull this in. So I have image wash hands clickable. I don't want it clickable if the game is not speaking. So I wanna to go to logic, I'm gonna put not, and here is game speaking. So before I, the game speaks, it locks it by saying the game is speaking. Game is speaking is true, image hands is clickable, it's not true, so it means no, you can't click it while the game is speaking. Then I'm simply gonna do that for each one of the other images. Now I could come here and go to each one of these and pull this in and go up here and do not and get this and do that. Or I could simply duplicate this. Now, instead of image disinfect, I want image face mask. I then duplicate this. Instead of image face mask, I need hand sanitizer and I need one more. Instead of image hand sanitizer, we need social distance. So this fixes our little cheat. Now when we play the game, the user can't click while the app is telling you what to do. You have to wait. So let's refresh it and see. Disinfect. 
So I couldn't click anything. This didn't affect wear masks. Disinfect wear masks and sanitizer. See, I was trying to click disinfect and it wouldn't let me. So that fixes our little bug. Disinfect, wear a mask, hand sanitizer. Disinfect, wear a mask, hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer. So again, it locks it until after it's unspeak. Really, really simple to do. All right, so what about our heart score? Uh, what are we gonna do if the user loses? And if the user gets it wrong, we want to simply check if they have the high score, check their score and see if it's good enough, then we'll give them the high score. All right, look at this outer if statement though. Is this answer equal to the selected thing? That means it's right. Well, down here would mean they got it wrong. If the answer is not equal to the right sequence in the list, then they got it wrong, which would be down here. So down here we can, since we're doing a high score, we can check for the high score after loss. So let's make a procedure. And we're gonna call it check high score after loss. And again, all we're gonna do is pull this in right here. Well, to do our high score, we need to save that information inside of our app. Now you can see down here, I have a tiny DB, but let's go ahead and just kind of start out with, I'm gonna delete mine. So anytime you have a high score in any game, that game has to save that information. Whatever information it is, if, if it's your name, if it's your phone number, the app needs to save that in the database for the app. In App Inventor, you're gonna come down here to storage and you can see you have a couple different options. You have CloudDB, you can save it as a file, TinyDB and a TinyWebDB. We just are gonna use a TinyDB. Feel free to explore the other storage options, but we're gonna just simply store the score in our app. So I'm gonna drag this here. And it's called TinyDB1, but let's just call it DB high score, right? That's all it is. We need to either store values or get values inside of our app. So let's go to blocks. So what can we do? Let's look at the actual TinyDB block. I can clear the entire database. I can get a value. I need to give it a tag or I can store a value and I can get a tag. So we can store a score and we can get the score. And that's what we really want to do in this instance here. We're going to store the value if the current score is greater than the value that is stored inside of the database. So again, we have this little score up here. So we need to check, is this score greater than the score that is stored inside of our database? So that's a simple if statement. I'm gonna come here to control if. I'm gonna math, pull in this. Is my score greater than what? Well, I just told you, we wanna to go to our tiny DB and get the value. We need to give it a tag and to keep the tag consistent, let's just make a variable so we know what that is. So I'm gonna pull in a variable. Let's call it save tag high score. And I'm just gonna pull in text and the tag is gonna be high score. So this is the value to look up in the database to retrieve information. So I'm gonna put that there. The value if there is no high score. So if they're playing it for the first time and they get two and we don't have a high score, well, what is the high score? The value would be zero. So if there is no high score, the high score is zero. If the score is greater than zero, you're the new high score. So here we wanna save that value. I wanna pull in store. The tag, we just made that, it's right here. The value to store is now going to be our new score because the score was greater than the high score, so now that is the new score. So we need to update this high score label. 
So over here on the left side, you should see at the bottom, we have our label high score. I'm going to grab my text. I'm going to click join. Put text inside of it. I'm going to say high score is now equal to the new score. So there we go. What else can we do in here? We can say, congratulations, you set the new high score. So let's do a text-to-speech, text, congratulations, you set the new high score. And what else could we do? That is pretty much it. Now, what if the user score is not greater than the high score? Well, we should say something to the user. We say, sorry you lost, your score was this, try again. So down here, I'm gonna do an else statement with a simple text-to-speech. And let's do a join statement with text inside of it. And we're gonna say, you lose, your score was, and I'm just gonna duplicate score and I'm gonna put down here try again to beat the high score so let's just quickly go through this code if my score is greater than the current value of the high score then I'm going to store that value the high score I'm gonna update the label I'm gonna say congratulations you set the new high score if it's not greater than the high score, it's going to say, you lose, sorry, your score was four. Try again to beat the high score. Pretty straightforward. So let's go to game actually and pull in initialize and let's put high score up there. And also inside of start game, instead of loading this every time they start the game, I'm just gonna put load COVID preventions inside of there as well. Is there anything I need else I want to do inside of here? How about let's say when the screen initialize, let's read the directions to the user. So the directions are inside of here, TBX game instructions, and this is a text box. I made it read only so the user can't click inside of here. See, I can't click inside of there. Um, I made it multi-line, that way it loops down but I just wanna read this text. So let's get that and read that when the game starts as well. So let's go down to text-to-speech and pull this and we'll go back up to our TBX game instructions and let's just simply read that. Um, is there anything else I wanna do? I could play the background music so playing the background music and the sound effect when lose, I'm gonna leave that up to you. Um, we'll talk about that in a sec, but this is pretty much the game. When I start the game, the other thing I need to do is I want to clear my answers in order. So when I restart the game, I don't wanna start off from where I ended. I wanna make sure that it starts over. Anytime you start the game, so here I'm gonna add that comment. Clear the answers in order every new game. And this is gonna be reset the user answer number every new game. And this is reset the score every new game. All right, so that's what start game kind of does. Start game gets called from here. Anytime we click the button and do, 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 do. Let's just call it start game over, which makes a little bit more sense for us. And that's pretty much it. All right, so now I think we're good. Um, we could add in some other things. So for example, when I click play, it is showing this button. So if I click play, that should go away until the game is over. 
So I shouldn't be able to just click, keep pushing play. It doesn't make sense. So this button here, there is this visible property. If I turn it off, it hides. All prevent COVID-19 spread. Play the game and touch the prevention steps. Open in the correct order to get the high score. So you can see I refreshed my game. So now that you know this is working, it's loading the preventions. It's also speaking the directions. So that part works. Let's just fix this little button issue. So whenever I press play game, I'm going to hide my play game button. I'm just gonna to go to logic. I'm gonna make this false. So it's gonna hide. Hand sanitizer. All right, down here, I want to show my button again. So if I get down to this point, I need to show my button. So I'm gonna go back to button play game, find my visible, and I'm gonna turn it to true. So it said hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer disinfect. Hand sanitizer disinfect. Hand sanitizer disinfect wear masks. Hand sanitizer disinfect wear masks. Hand sanitizer disinfect wear masks social distance. Try again to beat the high score. And there you go. So that is the end of our game. If you look at the class page, I gave you a bunch of sounds. We've done this before. I'm not going to show you how to do it. I gave you a bunch of sounds here. Lose sounds. Do it the same, but better. And you have some other ones. Do you want to win? Okay, I think we're done here. Really? These are all loose sounds. You got That's six. That's not good. You got six of them. Here's another one. Um, just do what it says. Now here is the wind sounds. We're all proud of you. Nice little run you had there. Not bad. You're on fire. Way to go! You're good. So, again, I've given you these sounds. My challenge to you is down here, I want you to play the lose sounds if they lose down here. I want you to play the win sounds if they actually set the high score up here. Now we've used sounds inside of list since way back in my Star Wars app. We did it in a bunch of apps. I'll give you a hint. You're gonna need two lists. Win sounds, it's gonna be a list of the sounds that you had, that you need. And I'm gonna have loose sounds. You're gonna pick a random one of these guys. If it's up here, if you set the high score, you're gonna pick a random win sound and say it to the user. If it's down here, if they do not beat the high score, you're gonna pick a random loose sound and say it down here. So that is my challenge to you. You will complete that part. We're done with this app. Go ahead, finish the challenge, and then turn it into your teacher.